first step in this process is getting to know you. I ask every single client these 10 questions. Is it okay if I go through these questions with you? That way, this is my checklist. Now these questions have been developed over 25 years and they are very powerful. And the sequence of them will reveal <laughs> amazing things about your clients, about your prospects. Question number one, tell me what it is you think I do. I mean, that might seem like a strange question, right? Like, well, I'm coming into your office. You've given me, you know, an introduction. I'm interested. Maybe I was referred. I mean, the referrals are unbelievable. Ask somebody that's been referred to you, what do you think it is I do? Their answer is going to be based on whatever that person that referred them told them that you did. And it could, you know, it could be anything. I mean, not very many people come in and say, oh, well, I'm really excited about buying a $100,000 a year life insurance policy because I talked to Bob and you sold him one of those last week. Right? That doesn't happen, well, it's never happened to me. It's pretty interesting to understand what people think it is that you do. When I have this in front of me, I have a plasticized version of it. And the reason I have a plasticized version of it is I want them to know that this is not my first day on the job, that I've thought through this, that I'm ready for this, that I do this a lot. You know, you go into that doctor's office and you know that guy's done eight knees this week and you're gonna be number nine, that's reassuring. I don't think it's really great, especially if you're not in your own office and you're going out to someone else's environment. If you're just kind of coming in there loosey-goosey being, hey man, I'm glad we're meeting today, let's talk a little bit about your money. It's like, well, you know, I, I'm, this is kind of serious to me. I wish it was a little bit more serious to you. I also have this in paper form, obviously, because I take notes and I, and I asked people, would it be okay if I jot down keep answers and actually write down some of the words that you say because I want to learn your language I don't want you to have to learn mine interesting so Christina right stock market you know a lot about the stock market Christina does the stock market stay steady or does it go up and down how would you describe that in your words okay great so what does you think I do number two what are you doing in preparation for your financial future? Hey, I'm going to get a fact finder. I'm going to learn all kinds of stuff. I'm going to learn about everything that they have. I'm going to look at their tax statement. Why am I asking this question before I even get into anything? Because what are they going to tell me first? What they think is most important and what they're most proud of. Now, if they happen to be super proud of the fact that their brother-in-law is a financial advisor and helping them with their investments, I'd like to know that sooner versus later. I mean, I'm a big believer that I never try to open my mouth until I know what my prospect or client thinks first. Question number three, what do you like most about what you're doing? You'll probably hear something pretty similar, but it's nice to check in on this. And you'll also hear, you know, some pretty interesting things. You'll learn a little bit about how they think in terms of proportion. You know, what do, what do we use when we say proportions of people's money? Portfolio allocation. Those are our words. Those are industry words. Most of your prospects and clients have no clue about the proportions of their money. They have no idea that 40% is in the stock market and 60% is in bonds or the other way around. They have no idea. So when you say, what do you like most? I tell you, nine out of 10 times, they like something a lot that's about 4% of their money. I get it all the time. We get lots of West Coast you know, high tech people. Oh, I love my Apple stock. And they got the Apple phone, they got the Apple earbud, they got the Apple watch. It's like, yeah, this isn't a financial decision. You're a disciple of Steve Jobs. This question, though, is about, you know, finding out what they know about what they like the most and where it is proportionally. Next one, what don't you like about your current financial position? You'll hear stuff that will absolutely, at that point in time, give you a complete window into the future about where the conversation's gonna go. If they sit there and say, well, you know, last December I was pretty nervous. I was looking at that, that stock market stuff last December and I'm getting close to retirement. I, I didn't like that. I mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't find that comfortable when that market went, or who knows? I mean, they might be saying, well, I'm worried about the real estate market. I'm living in Vancouver, Canada, and the real estate's been going up forever. I'm worried about that collapsing kind Whatever it is, we want to know. I mean, we're in the problem-solving business, so why wouldn't we try to understand what, what people's problems are before we get, get going on that? What would you like to see enhanced or improved? 
often not the same as what you're going to hear in what don't you like about your financial position. This is usually where some greed comes in. <laughs> Sometimes you'll hear things like, well, I'd like a bigger boat. I'd like my boat to be enhanced or improved. Awesome. I will find a way to get you a bigger boat and do it the most cash efficient way possible. It's a means to an end for most people on the planet. They don't wake up every day thinking about money. They wake up every day thinking about what money's helping them do and preventing them from doing. What's been your experience in preparing for your financial future? You ever run into somebody and said, well, we went in and talked to a financial advisor and they said they had a minimum of $250,000. We were kind of embarrassed because we didn't have that kind of money. Well, I'd like to know that. Now, if I've got a, I don't, personally, we don't have a minimum, but if I've got a minimum, then I, I, that's good to know. Or, yeah, well, let me tell you, my dad, I've been working, and my dad's getting up there in age. Man, he's got this life insurance policy. They just called him and said he has to put in another $5,000 a year, otherwise that policy's gonna run out. I mean, that, I, that's I hate that, that's terrible. Okay, wouldn't you kind of want to know that before you get through your best hour and a half? I mean, these things, I'm telling you, the sale's done in the first 10 minutes in my mind. I know exactly how it's going to play out if I stick to my checklist and go through these questions. What would you like to ideally accomplish with your strategy? Hey, everybody wants enough money to retire, they want to retire. That's not the answer we're looking for. This one's about emotion. People will answer this emotionally. What do you ideally like to accomplish? You want to make a note of what their word is for feeling good about their money. And that's a word you want to use a lot when you're helping them move forward in their position. What's your process for making decisions? Do you ever ask anybody else for help? Do you have some other people in your life that try to, you know, that are mentors to you or that are coaches to you in this area that might help you? Hey, if that's the way this is going, I want that accountant or your dad in this conversation earlier versus later. So this isn't really about just about the mechanics of how you make decisions. It's also learning who else is involved in your decision-making process. You guys ever get in there with a couple and one of them's the talker and the other one's the quiet one? The talker's all into it, he's nod, and he's just, you know, I, I say he because it's typically been my experience, it's a guy thing. The guy's like, yeah, Mark, I'm good. It's, it's, it's fascinating to me the difference of how people respond when my wife's leading the meeting versus when I'm leading the meeting. I mean, there is a huge difference, depending upon, in my experience, in the gender of the person that's leading the meet, meeting, talking to a couple, how it goes. And they both have strengths, they both have weaknesses. But you get there, you get through the process, and who's ever bonding with you is like, yeah, this sounds good, this sounds good. You know, and then they go and they get in the, they, they leave and you never hear from them again. Well, the quiet one vetoed the whole program, right? So. This is also an opportunity to make sure both people answer these questions. It's hard sometimes because if you're sitting there with a <coughs> dominant person and someone who's quieter to make the time to go to the quieter person and say, well, how would you answer that? Now, you don't want to do it on every question, of course, because it could be a little condescending, but you've got to get that quiet person to talk in that meeting. Otherwise, you're not learning things you need to know. Anything that keeps you up at night? Pretty easy, pretty simple, almost, I, not very often do I hear, no, I sleep like a baby, Mark. Everything's awesome. You know? A lot of times it has nothing to do with their money. Yeah, there's this guy at work, he's trying to go for the promotion, and I'm not sure I'm going to get it, I'm kind of stressed about that. Or, yeah, what keeps me up at night is my poor mom, she can't find her car keys anymore because she's losing it, but we can't get her driver's license away from her. Not whatever. I mean, there's just things that all keep us up at night. As advisors, we can probably have an influence and make that less stressful for them. Even if we don't do anything different, we can give them assurances about what they have. When it comes to your money, the one thing you care most about is what? Here you'll hear a lot of things, but typically you'll hear, I just hate losing money. I mean, that's what you hear a lot of. There is, believe it or not, some magic in these words and this, these, this, this lineup. Um, I don't know what you have for your checklist when you first meet somebody and they come into your office. Whether you use this or make up your own, I'd recommend that you make it an absolute bedrock of your process to go through the same questions every time you meet somebody. 